Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I'm here to tell you about an awesome way for you to rub elbows with your favorite podcast host here on the Sports History Network, while at the same time rooting for your hometown team this upcoming NFL season. You've been hearing all about our partner, Tailgate Fantasy, the past few weeks. Well, dig on this. Tailgate created a special Sports History Network League for our listeners, so we can put the word fan back into fantasy football together. It's free to join, and if you do so before the season kicks off, you'll automatically be entered into a drawing for a free t-shirt from one of our other partners, Home Field Apparel. It's a win-win-win! So hurry up today and head to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash tailgate for all the details. Again, at sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash tailgate. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday's Sports on the Sports History Network. After winning back-to-back World Series in 1977 and 1978, the New York Yankees had an off year in 1979, finishing the season with an 89-71 and record and failing to reach postseason play. More importantly and tragically, their captain, Thurman Munson, was killed in a plane crash. The Yankees were determined to get back to the World Series in 1980. Most of their top players from 1979 returned in 1980. Outfielders Bobby Mercer, Lou Pinella, and Reggie Jackson. Infielders Bucky Dent, Greg Nettles, and Willie Randolph. Pitchers Ed Figueroa, Ron Guidry, Tommy John, and Louis Tiant. Relief pitchers Rich Goose Gossage and Ron Davis. But there were some changes. Rick Cerrone took over at catcher. Pitcher Jim Catfish Hunter retired during the offseason. Nearing the end of his career, Rory White went to play in Japan. First baseman Chris Chambliss went to play for the Atlanta Braves. An outfielder, Mickey Rivers, joined the Texas Rangers. But perhaps the most significant change was that Dick Hauser took over as manager. The last four and a half seasons saw Billy Martin or Bob Lemon as the Yankee skipper. The team got off to a slow start in April, but by June, the Yankees were red hot. At one point, winning nine games in a row. By July 19th, they had built a nine and a half game lead for first place in their division. Bucky Dent, Reggie Jackson, Greg Nettles, Willie Randolph, Tommy John, and Goose Gossage made the all-star team. Pitcher Tommy John, acquired from the Dodgers before the 1979 season, was having a great season as was the always controversial Reggie Jackson. Catcher Rick Cerrone was filling in admirably for the late Thurman Munst, while Bob Watson, who took over for Chris Chambliss at first base, was also having a great season. But as the season progressed, it became apparent that their division rival, the defending American League champion Baltimore Orioles was a team to be reckoned with. The Yankees lost seven of the 13 games they played against the Orioles. It was going to take a lot of work to win the division. By the end of August, the Bronx Bombers were only one and a half games ahead of Baltimore. But the Yankees went 25 and eight in their final 33 games to finish the season with 103 wins and only 59 losses. 
their best record since 1963. The Orioles finished in second place with 100 wins. Pitcher Tommy John won 22 games while losing only 9. Ron Guidry went 17 and 10, and Goose Gossage had 33 saves on the year. First baseman Bob Watson led the team in batting average at 307. Reggie Jackson had one of the best seasons of his career, batting 300 with 41 home runs and 111 RBIs. Second baseman Willie Randolph batted 294, while left fielder Lou Pinella hit 287. It was on to the American League Championship Series to see which team would represent the American League in the World Series. Their opponent was the Kansas City Royals, a team the Yankees had defeated in the ALCS three years in a row, 1976, 77, and 78. But the Royals were no slouch finishing the 1980 season with a 97 and 65 record, the third best record in the majors. The Royals had beaten the Yankees in eight of the 12 games the teams played against each other in 1980. Still, the Yankees were favored to win. After Rick Cerrone and Lou Pinella hit back-to-back -back home runs, in the second inning of Game 1, it appeared the Bombers' playoff dominance over Kansas City would continue. But the Royals scored seven unanswered runs as pitcher Larry Gura silenced the Yankees' bats. In the second game, the Yankees were trailing 3-2 and had a chance to tie it in the eighth inning but Willie Randolph was thrown out at home plate. The teams would travel to the Bronx for Game 3 at the house that Ruth built. Surely the Royals would fold under the pressure. The Yankees held a 2-1 lead in the 7th inning of Game 3 when league MVP George Brett belted a 3-run homer to give the Royals a 4-2 lead. The Yankees stormed back in the 8th inning, loading the bases with no outs, but came away empty. Just like that, the Yankees' brilliant season was over. Despite leading the Yankees to their best regular season record since 1963, manager Dick Hauser was fired. The Yankees would win the American League pennant in 1981, but not again until 1996. As we have seen time and again over the years, the team with the best record doesn't always win the championship. That will conclude this week's podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and God bless. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. 
Hello, football friends. This is Darren Hayes of the Pigskin Dispatch Podcast, and I'd like to invite you to the portal of positive football history, Pigskin Dispatch and pigskindispatch.com. We talk about everything that centers around the game of American football, expert discussions, the origins of the games, the great players, teams, and coaches, and more, and some great guests and insights from experts. We have new episodes three to four times a week, and you can find us on sportshistorynetwork.com, pigskindispatch.com, or your favorite podcast provider. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.